In the Bhagavad, there is a very beautiful story which comes of sage Markandeya. So one sage Markandeya, he was invoking Lord Narayana and when the Lord was pleased, he came in front of him and request and asked him, what is it that you want? So he said, I want to know of your Maya because sage Markandeya was beyond Maya. He never ever gotten into the clutches, clutches of Maya to understand what it can do to him. So it was a very unique request. He said, I want to know the play of Maya because everybody says caught up in the caught up in Maya, caught up in Maya. I would like to know. So the Lord says, okay, you will be able to experience the power of my Maya soon enough. And Bhagavan disappears. After some time we are told a huge pralaya happened. Uh, Mark, Sage Markandeya was in his ashram. So, pralaya happened. Pralaya means the waters just come and uh, you know everything gets sub submerged in the water. Finally, it is only waters and waters and waters everywhere. And it's all very, very dark over there because everything has gone in. Dissol uh, dissolution has happened. So, there is no sun, there is moon, no moon, there is nothing at all. It's all totally dark. And it's only water and all the land has got submerged in the waters. So, ultimately it is only water. So, he, he sees or he experiences his own ashram also being submerged in the waters and he had asked the Lord, I want to see the play of Maya. This is the play of Maya that Bhagavan shows to him. It is not only the creative aspect where you were created and you were sustained, but see my destructive aspect also. So, therefore, we see uh, Markandaya being caught up in the waters. It is not um, waters which are just flowing over there, torrential it is, huge waves. He is getting lifted up and down by those huge monstrous uh, waves. Like that he is passing so many lots of time. He is caught up with hunger and thirst. He does not know what to do. He is trying to keep himself alive, swimming in those waters. And then suddenly he spots in a distance one small little banyan leaf. And on the banyan leaf, he finds a small little infant, child, infant. So, he is very curious to know who is this infant over, way, over here when everything has got submerged in the water. How did this infant survive? And that infant is resting on a leaf, banyan leaf. And where is the banyan leaf? It is floating in the same waters in which Markandeya also finds himself. So, it is a huge ocean, pralaya waters over there. On that, who is reclining? Bhagavan alone is reclining over there in the form of an infant. We call this as that picture over there, I am sure many of you would have seen, Vatapatra Shai. Vatapatra means banyan leaf. Shai means one who is resting on it or reclining on it, lying down on it. So, therefore, Bhagavan is known as Vatapatra Shai. So, he approaches. Markande approaches this little infant and then he questions over there. The infant is brilliant, Tejo Maya is. So, it is not an ordinary child at all. And in spite of all that is happening around, it is so dark, the waves are all lashing around everywhere, but still there is a blissful smile on this infant. As though completely uh, unaware of what is going on around and about, very blissfully lying down over there blue dark blue blue like the rain bearing cloud that is the uh, color of this infant and he has got this child has got with its hands it's holding on to its own foot and the toe the big toe of that foot is in its mouth so the child has pulled the its leg towards itself and it is keeping its big toe in its mouth with the help of its two hands. The leg has been grasped or the foot has been grasped by its two hands and the toe is inside the mouth and the child is, the infant is blissfully sucking at the toe. It looks very, very strange. Why should an infant keep its foot in its hands, hold its foot in its hands, put it in the mouth and suck? Actually, it is very unhygienic because the foot is always placed on the ground. So, this is the uh, scene that he sees over there. And then the moment he goes near the child, near the Lord, Vatapatra Shai, 
the child is breathing in and breathing out so when the child breathes in the infant breathes in we are told markandeya is sucked into the child and he immediately goes inside the child inside the infant there in the stomach of the infant he sees all the worlds he sees the play of uh, time and uh, space and time he sees cause effect relationship he sees all the worlds over there 14 worlds over there planetary system everything he sees over there it's a vishwarupa darshana like uh, yes mother yashoda had when uh, krishna opened his mouth she caught him one day when he was eating mud and therefore she says open your mouth i want to see what is there because he said i am not eating mud but the gopis had convinced her they said we have seen him eating mud so she says open your mouth i want to see and when krishna opens his mouth this is the vision she had exactly the same vision sage markandeya has over there so he sees all of it and he sees himself also in it because he is a part of the universe and then after having had this glorious vision the infant breathes out when the infant breathes out he comes out and when sage markandeya comes out there the vision disappears so he has had a very powerful experience of very vivid experience of what is the lord's maya over there and then everything becomes normal after that there is no pralaya there is no deluge he is back in his ashram over there seated over there it's all dry everywhere around so the whole thing happened over there what was it it was all nothing but a creation of the lord's power which we call as maya so over here this nama vatapatra shayami shayami mean the infant who is reclining on the banyan leaf which is floating on the ocean on a large expanse of water therefore vatapatra shayi also we can say is mahoda dishaya one who is lying down on the great ocean now what does this simplify uh, signify for us why should bhagavan be lying down on a banyan leaf no leaf can hold a child can take the weight or the burden of an, even an infant not possible even the biggest leaf also we know how fragile how delicate a leaf is so how can it support a child but we see the infant lying down on the banyan uh, leaf and that is floating in the water so what is what does this represent for us what a patra the whole image over there represents for us a man of realization a jeevan mukta when we talk about our saints and sages whoever it be swami vivekananda ramana maharshi purandara dasaro muttu swami dikshita because each one has approached the lord in a different way Uh, say tukara mira bai anybody it can be the alwars the shaivite saints so many of them we have all are jeevan muktas jeevan mukta means one who has realized one who has reached that state of enlightenment so this whole picture of vatapatra shai represents for us a man of realization what do the waters represent over there the dark dreary waters which are uh, uh, not calm and quiet they are all agitated the waters are all disturbed because it is deluge over there it represents samsar for us we say samsara sagara samsara sagara so samsara sagara of course is dark because dark in the sense we are all in spiritual ignorance ignorance is always likened to darkness and spiritual knowledge is always likened to light so we are all in the dark and we have all fallen into the ocean of samsara the dark ocean of samsara wherein it's not small small waves and ripples which are lashing the huge monstrous waves that are lashing us the trouble the sorrow the grief now and then little pleasure but we always say i am caught up in the ocean of samsara nothing seems to be okay for us even everything is okay also we say okay but we say so the ocean over there represents for us samsara in samsar over there a man of realization how does he move about he is the the, the, the infant represents a man of realization infant means child like not childish there is a difference between child like and childish we always say children up to the age of 5 or 6 are god like why do we say that because their mind is not conditioned like our minds are conditioned 
children they don't have a past even something has happened yesterday day before they forget very easily they forget we are not like that 20 years ago something happened we say memory system is not okay but we remember that so our past uh, our minds are conditioned by our past good and bad similarly our minds are conditioned by the future also what we want to, uh, to get in our life acquire in our life we long for this we hope for this we crave for this so our minds are conditioned by the future also that's why we engage ourselves in any field of activity i want this i want that i long for this i crave for this so our minds are always conditioned by the past and by the future children's minds are not conditioned by a past and the future they are always very very aware they are they are, they are not conditioned then how are they living they live in the vital present just like a man of realization therefore we always say men of realization or a jivan mukta is child like not childish child like it is afterwards the children slowly slowly become conditioned and slowly they will move towards how we are all but in the beginning they are not like that at all so therefore how best to depict a man of realization an infant so bhagavan himself has become that small infant over there to indicate to us a man of realization where is he established in where is he residing in he is rooted in his own experience of that highest of the spiritual knowledge which he it started from all shravana listening shravana manana nididhyasana ityadi so even though a man of reali- after realization even though he is amidst us a man of reali- jivan mukta he is working for the welfare of the society still there is no fall for him he is well rooted in well established in centered in the spiritual knowledge never ever will he drift away from that at all in the bhagavad gita the term used is sthita pragna second chapter arjuna as krishna i want to know the characteristics of a sthita pragna sthita means to be rooted in to be grounded in to be centered in in what pragna nya means to know pragna means visheshena to know not knowing intellectually but experiencing the spiritual knowledge what are his characteristics so a man of realization wherever he is whatever he is doing for the welfare of the society he will always be doing it god we can't even say god centered he is centered in his own realization and from that center or from that point he is transacting whereas we are all transacting from our ego standpoint this an ocean of a di- this is all the difference between us and them otherwise all of us are the same they eat like us walk like us talk like us they sleep like us everything is the same even their physical body un- undergoes health now health now ill health just like any of us they also feel hungry they eat they feel thirsty they drink they also feel exhausted therefore they they rest just like any of us but what is the difference between the two of us they do all their activities centered in their realization of the highest we all do our transactions perform our activities ego centered centered around the ego in us that's all the difference so how to indicate it so already we know infant means child like they are so krishna over there over there in the form of an infant represents a jivan mukta lying down on the bana, uh, banyan uh, leaf the banyan leaf there represents knowledge in the 15th chapter of the bhagavad gita krishna says over there he said the leaf represents the vedas vedas means knowledge the various parts of the tree of an ashvatha vriksha over there is described for us we won't go into the 15th chapter detail but then what does he liken the leaves to be he likens the leaves to be knowledge or no, uh, the leaves over there of a tree represents knowledge so where is the bhagavan lying down on reclining on he is reclining on knowledge the banyan leaf where are we all reclining on we are all recl- reclining on ignorance 
so therefore on the banyan leaf the bhagavan is there in the form of a infant and what is the color of the banyan leaf green green represents equilibrium green represents tranquility calmness composure no agitation among the seven colors over there the entire seven colors beautifully explained to us the scheme of spiritual of our own, uh, our own spiritual journey starting from red we should reach violet vibhyor red means we are in the realm of activity we are in the realm of karma beyond the blue and the indigo is the purple what does purple stand for purple stands for enlightenment realization so if this is the realm of change that represents the state of changelessness so in the seven colors over here the middle color is green so green always represents balance for us tranquility for us equipoise for us neutral equilibrium among the seven days of the week wednesday comes in between in the middle the color of wednesday is green it is presided by the graha called buddha budavara buddha graha the color associated with buddha is green green emerald is the stone for that and the dhanya navadhanyas every planet is associated with one of the dhanyas rice with moon uh, wheat with sun etc turdal with mangala what about buddha the the middle day it is green gram green or the green gram we call it green gram because it is green so it represents equilibrium for us so bhagavan is not only residing on centered in grounded in rooted in his own uh, knowledge but he is always in equilibrium never we see the lord tossed about like as up and down up and down up and down we are always on a seesaw either we are up or we are down we are never in equilibrium bhagavan never loses his balance um, a master a jeevan mukta never loses his balance so he is resting on the green banyan leaf over there and what is he doing over there he is caught hold of his foot the feet are the ones on which we stand on if our feet are not okay we can't be well rooted and then only we can walk so our whole weight the body is physical weight is taken on by the by our feet so feet are those on which we rest similarly a man of realization what is he resting on he is resting on knowledge therefore the feet represent always knowledge whose feet the lord's feet whose uh, 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 a man of uh, realization jivan mukta our gurus our rishis that is why we prostrate on to them we do not know we can't comprehend and apprehend what is the knowledge what uh, they are they are a personification of spiritual knowledge experience that moksha mukti walking on two feet what it what it is we can't comprehend and apprehend what is the knowledge that help them to experience we do not know first of all we have to understand it intellectually but what is the nearest that we can see with our two eyes physical eyes we can see their feet therefore their feet for us represents the spiritual knowledge and therefore we bow down to them or do our namaskar to them because in our head is our intellect to that intellect the knowledge must come where is the knowledge it is at their feet they are actually rooted on knowledge but we can't see the knowledge on which they are rooted on on which they are standing on standing in courts but the nearest we can see is their feet over there therefore we bring down our head or intellect in line with their feet so that due to resonance if we can connect with them the knowledge that is there will easily enter into our intellect so very beautiful concept so the feet or the foot represents knowledge and amongst the uh, the, uh, the fingers of the foot also each each of our of our foot has got five just like our hands have got five fingers the biggest one is called as the toe similarly in our hand also we have got different fingers little finger ring finger middle finger 
uh, forefinger, the thumb. The thumb always represents knowledge. And thumb is equivalent to the big toe. So, the big toe represents knowledge. Bhagavan, what is he doing? He is pulling his feet, his foot, sorry, foot towards himself. Towards himself means not outgoing, but not extrovert, but introvert. All our masters are introvert. Though they are, though they are transacting with us, they seem to be extroverted, but they are not extroverted. Because they are operating from the core which they have experienced within themselves. So, pulling the foot towards himself, that little infant over there, represents being introvert and not extrovert. And the, what is Bhagavan doing over there with his two uh, little hands? He is holding on to the thumb over there, to the foot, and he has put that thumb in, into his mouth. Thumb represents spiritual knowledge. And he is sucking, we are told, on his toe. And he is blissfully lying down over there. Which means he is reveling and reveling and reveling is in his own realization. He, if it's a master, if it is Bhagavan, he is reveling and reveling and reveling in his own infinite glory. That's what it means over there. Hands represent karma, sadhana it represents. So instead of our sadhana being extroverted, we have to make it all introvert. Is the meaning of holding the foot with, uh, with the two hands and pulling it towards himself, not away from it. It's a very beautiful picture. We have it also. Some of us will have it in our puja room. Some of us would have, you know, framed it and put it on the in the on the wall of our hall. But we, what does it indicate to us? What a patrashai. It represents for us the Lord and His glory, and it also represents for us man of realization. All our jivan mukta, so beautifully it has been depicted over there. A very beautiful de depiction and the infant is blissfully smiling. Come what may, outside. Um, uh, Adi Shankara in Bhajagovindam says, Yoga Ratova, Boga Ratova, Sangha Ratova, Sangha Vihinaha. Put the master anywhere, conducive enver environment or non-conducive environment. Whether things are okay or whether things are not okay. Anything is fine. But he was realized, Nandati Nandati Nandatyeva. He revels and revels and revels in, in his own experience of the higher state. This is what Vatapatrashai depicts for us. It's, it's such a beautiful, these are, these are called as word, uh, word painting because we use words, but what are we trying to, uh, with the words we have painted something, where on our own minds, on the canvas of our mind. So, if, if, if it stays in us, if we can register it, register it in us, we will know the, uh, not, not the entire glory, but at least uh, a little bit, tip of the tip of the iceberg of what, what is it when we say Lord, what is it that we mean when we say Lord, or what is it that we, we mean when we say a Mahatma or a Jeevan Mukta, because outwardly they are just like any of us. What is the difference between us one? What is the difference between them and us? This is what. So, what a patrasha. It's a beautiful representation, highly symbolic, highly suggestive of a man of realization and of course of the Lord also.